Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. This is AutoLine Daily for January 12th, and now the news. Mercedes-Benz and BMW are engaged in a knockdown slugfest to claim the number one sales race for luxury cars in the American market. Both of them say they have no interest in the top sales slot. They merely want to build good cars and satisfy their customers. Well, don't you believe it? They crave the bragging rights. Now, Earl Hesterberg, the CEO of Group One, which is one of the largest dealer groups in the U.S., says all of this is bothering him. He says the German luxury brands are putting more emphasis on quantity than quality, and that it reminds him of the sales wars between Chevy and Ford. He says that in December, the list of sales incentives from one of the luxury brands was 29 pages long. He will not say who that was, but you know what? In November, Mercedes sales shot up 40%, and they were up nearly 30% in December. So the evidence suggests he was talking about Mercedes. General Motors is talking with German union IG Metall about restructuring Opel. According to Reuters, the company may shift Chevrolet production from South Korea to Europe in exchange for cost cuts at Opel. But you know, this is going to be a political minefield for GM. IG Metall says its current contract prevents job cuts and plant closures. But analysts say if GM does not cut costs at Opel, Opel will be forced into bankruptcy. And yet, despite all the trouble at Opel, Fiat and Chrysler CEO Sergio Marchionne says he is interested in acquiring it. According to the Detroit News, Marchionne says he needs to sell 6 million vehicles a year globally to be competitive and acquiring Opel would help him reach that goal. Marchionne unsuccessfully tried to buy Opel in 2009. Rolls-Royce had its best sales year in the company's 107-year history in 2011. The company sold just over 3,500 cars last year, and that is a 31% increase compared to 2010. The company had strong sales in the U.S., Asia, and the Middle East. Fast cars are always fun, and Autoblog found a video of what is claimed to be the quickest Mercedes-Benz ever. This SLR was tweaked by specialty tuner Rentec. Its supercharged V8 was juiced for another 160 horsepower. That's a whole Ford Focus worth of extra giddy up. And the results are staggering. Zero to 60 takes just 2.2 seconds. The quarter mile is done and gone in less than 9.8 seconds at nearly 141 miles an hour. See, I told you it was fast. Small cars are never big money makers. The profit margins are thinner than the fabric used on their seats. But the folks at Chrysler have come up with a good way of cashing in on the new Dodge Dart. This C-segment sedan will be available with more than 150 Mopar accessories. Some of the things offered include the usual appearance items like grill inserts, spoilers, and bigger wheels, but the list goes on and on, and there are performance options as well, like bigger brakes. As you know, the Dart shares a lot of design cues with the Alfa Romeo Giulietta on which it's based. Look at the shape of the body side aperture, probably the most expensive stamping on a vehicle. Even though the Alfa is a hatchback, it's almost identical to the Dart. Both cars have low front ends and similar looking windshields, but we're told the Dart is wider and longer than the Giulietta. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Reducing exhaust emissions, aerified diesel particulate filters, high filtration, low back pressure, small package size, excellent durability, DowAerify.com. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Randy Seck really liked what he saw at the Detroit show. Glad to see the big three are getting it right, he says. 
Now I can buy American and be proud of it. Love the code 130R. However, seems to me that it's built on the ATS platform. If given the money and choice to buy anything at the show, I'd rather drive out with that Lincoln though. Randy Sack, you got it right. The Chevy Code 130R concept is a rear wheel drive car built on the Cadillac ATS platform. And while Randy Sack would drive home in the new Lincoln, Kit Gerhardt is not that impressed with the car. The appearance of the MKZ sure wouldn't get my 10K or whatever it is over the Fusion. I like the Fusion's Aston S nose, but the MKZ is just plain strange. Kit, I confess, I really like that car, but I think we have to wait until we see it driving down the road. Sometimes looking at a static car on a pedestal at an auto show really doesn't convey what it looks like, as opposed to seeing it outside in natural light, driving down the road with other cars around it. My bet is you'll think the MKZ in real life looks better than the pictures. Pedro Fernandez is not buying into all the hoopla about that new Alfa Giulietta, I mean the new Dodge Dart. He says, that crap Dart from Sergio's warped mine is going to be such a mechanical nightmare that I would not want to be a Dodge technician in the next couple of years. <laughs> Listen up people, Pedro hath spoken. Chuck Grenchy says, well I didn't agree with the Nakodi and now I don't agree with the designer awards. Guess I just have to agree to disagree. You know Chuck, half the fun of trying to determine the North American car of the year or determine who has the best design is getting to argue about it with other people. The key though is not to take it too seriously. You know we've actually had some people quit the Nakodi jury because they did not like who won. And Jeff in Jersey didn't like the choices for the North American Truck of the Year Award. You really think a Honda CRV is a truck? Or the new Land Rover? I would like to know how you all judge a truck. Not one of the so-called trucks, he says, up for car of the year or truck of the year, can carry two by fours or take a load of dirt. Jeff, I suppose I could take the easy way out and say that the American government classifies all of those vehicles as trucks and each of the companies who makes them counts them as trucks. But essentially, you're right. They're not what the public would call a truck. And we in the Nakodi jury have got to come up with a new classification system. So let the arguments begin. And speaking of arguments, be sure to join us tonight for AutoLine After Hours, where Peter DeLorenzo, myself, and the irrepressible Jim Hall will be talking all about the hits and misses at the Detroit Auto Show. Like I said before, half the fun about being in this business is getting to argue about all the cars. So join us tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for the best insider discussion of what's going on behind the scenes in the automotive industry. And that wraps up this show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.